it's from a lot of people can start buying the book. I get no commissions out of this, this is just a person. <laughs> the book is called Cyber War by Richard Clark. Uh, and let me tell you just a little bit about the first chapter, which I, was really, I found very scary. It starts off with, from our side, a success story. It starts about when Israel, uh, Syrian nuclear reactor, Syria owned, I mean, excuse me, Israel owned Syrian IT, totally. The Syrians had no idea that Israeli jet fighters were coming across to bomb uh, and destroy their nuclear reactor. The skies were perfectly clear. The second story they talk about is the total de uh, den denial of service attack in Estonia by the Russians when the Estonians decided to move a war statue uh, that was revered by the Russians from World War II. The third story was about uh, the war with Georgia between uh, the, the Russian Republic and Georgia. That's where we are, cyber warfare. So just a couple of sentences from the um, book jacket, which I just also wanted to share, just to give you an idea what this book is about. Um, Cyber war goes beyond the geek talk of hackers and computer scientists to explain clearly and convincingly why cyber war is, how cyber war works, how cyber war weapons work, and how vulnerable we are as a nation and as individuals to the vast and looming war of cyber criminals. From the first cyber crisis meeting in the White House a decade ago, um, I'm going to skip that sentence. Economic and military, uh, let's see what that sentence, so, excuse me. Um, We are already, the authors argue that we are already lost in uh, the new millennium cyber battles is tantamount to Soviet and uh, Russian theft of our nuclear bomb secrets in the 40s and 50s. We're at war and we don't believe it. I uh, strongly recommend this book uh, because information sharing is key to our success in future endeavors. So now I want to talk about uh, our true success story and the slides I'm showing are just screenshots from uh, actually, uh, Sunday, um, when uh, before I uh, left for um, the uh, conference, this is the White House homepage, and this has to do with the deep water spill. And as you can see in the lower right-hand corner, there is a link for uh, information about the deep water uh, spill, oil spill. The second slide, if you click on that, then you look. Uh, down at the lower right uh, by the video of the president, it says disasterassistance.gov. That's what it says, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. And then you go to this page, which is disasterassistance.gov page. This is the first page I really want to talk about. The disasterassistance.gov page is a FEMA page. It was designed for Disaster Assistance Improvement Program, which was inaugurated in December of 2008 on time, on schedule. Uh, it was also the uh, Disaster Assistance Improvement Program, uh, uses service under architecture and uses NEEM, and was one of the five recipients of the first NEEM Excellence Award, which Donna presented in Baltimore last September. Okay. <laughs> The oil spill. Uh, to I'm, I'm just I'm going to be very uh, not objective here because I'm very proud of what FEMA did here. FEMA very quickly stood up uh, using the disaster assistance pro, uh, improvement program, uh, a secondary page to file assistance for the VP oil spill. And if you look down below at the lower part of that page, you can see exactly how. Different people, different individuals, different corporations can apply for disaster assistance. Now, disaster assistance approval program is 17 federal agencies combined. This is what the citizens, the public sees. What they don't know is that you have a program run by FEMA, run by DHS at Winchester, Virginia, right, that is using Department of Labor compute servers. And it, what it basically does, this is a true portal. As far as people goes, this is one-stop shopping, except it goes out to 17 different services, 17 different components, actually more than that. And it all comes back to them. And then we're going to give you a real example that even goes beyond this and how we were successful on an individual basis. So from here, you click on, uh, now getting into how to file a claim for the uh, BP oil spill. And again, this is only part of the page. The page does scroll down further, and it's very simple, very clear, very direct. These are all live, again, from Sunday. And finally, again, this, this is the next page I'm going to show is also very long, and I couldn't get so much of it on the screen. And I try to give a representative example. So here it is: uh, housing, living assistance, resources for small businesses, resources for communities, etc. Uh, you click on any of these, it'll scroll down 15 minutes. Okay, 
and then you start filling out the forms. Now, Donna was actually at the White House when they, uh, I think, uh, actually commended us for that, right? <laughs> Do you want to add anything about what they said there? Uh, you, you know, so, so the DAI program has been uh, one of the uh, sort of early surprises in my career here where FEMA started building to an architecture I hadn't even articulated it right. So, so they started creating very flexible portals, very, very rigid knowledge management sort of practices in the background that made those portals run very, very well. And so it was uh, great to sit there in front of uh, the chief architect and Vivek and talk about a program that is implementing you know, sort of best practices uh, for architecture today and was able to very quickly turn around and create a, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, central point of assistance for citizens down there, um, you know, as a result of the oil spill who, who are really hurting and, and looking for ways to, to find help. And so, so it's a, you know, it's a great program. It was, I, it was sort of a proud moment to actually raise the best practice of, of FEMA in, in front of the White House. And so, yeah, so they, we, we're very, very proud of that. Uh, now, a real example. Now, many of you may know, and some may not know, uh, that there was significant flooding uh, down in the Tennessee region a few weeks ago. And the Grand Ole Opry now looks like the Bedford Springs Hotel before they started renovating it. It is a total disaster. It's really, truly devastating. And to the credit of the citizens of Tennessee and that, the whole area, uh, they just took, picked themselves like bootstraps and just managed to improve themselves without much help. But we do have a real example and uh, I'm going to ask Bob Davis, True Technologies, who really used it, that only he had one problem with the site or with the program. And I'll ask him about that, too. Oh, um, so, yeah, we had a little bit of rain. We had 21 inches of rain in less than 40 hours. Oh. And uh, you're right. Yeah. Um, Anything I'm about to say about what happened to my wife and myself, I'm whining compared to what happened to other people, okay? I'm whining. But we wound up with about four feet of water in our cellar. And initially, I thought, oh, we pumped it out. We looked around. Yeah, we lost some power tools and stuff. What's the point? And then it became a process of discovery that, oh, we're getting some subsidence here and you know, there were some real problems. So we'd never filed a claim with anybody because we figured it wasn't a big deal. So. Finally, Friday, before I came here, we flew up on Saturday, um, I said, you know, I think I'm going to go file a claim with FEMA just because the money's starting to add up into some real money here, and let's see what happens. And this was Friday? Friday. This Friday. past Friday. So I go online, and credit where credit's due, I didn't put in that much information. My name, my address, what kind of problem did you, and I wasn't like clicking a link here like, oh, I've got this specific thing. This is just a general thing. And I start, oh, uh, did this thing involve, and it had a bunch of lists and said flooding, yeah, seepage, yeah, okay. Before I know it, it's already figured out, well, it's got my address, right? It's already put in the date of when this event occurred. It's already figured out what kind of problems I was gonna have and what stuff I needed. And so I was stunned. I told Ira about it Sunday. I was like, I was stunned. And the really stunning part was, when we got here Saturday. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. I get a call, and it's the guy from FEMA wanting to come <laughs> inspect my house. Unfortunately, he can't do it unless someone who lives there is there, and we're not there. So now I've got to call back tomorrow night when we get home to get it scheduled. But I just, I mean, you don't get many real world stories about stuff. And this is like a real world thing. And like I said, I'm whining about what happened to us. We know people that lost everything except their wedding pictures, their birth certificates, and their dog, you know? But I think it's a real credit to this whole process and what can actually happen that I can be here and get a call and it's, it was pretty amazing, so. So essentially, Bob, you filled out the claim on Friday, and they wanted to see you on Monday at your house. Yeah. And unfortunately, you were here and not there. They're coming back. They're coming back. <laughs> that's a real success sure. story. And that's just, you know, two specific examples of data assistance improvement program.